Good morning and a very warm welcome to you and welcome to St. Paul's um, Sunday morning service. I hope that you have gathered your uh, order of service and your pew sheet so that you can um, follow and engage with the service more fully. And we'll begin our service with the hymn, O Lord my God, how great thou art. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we just take a moment of quiet to reflect on the ways in which we have uh, fallen short of our own desires for our own lives and perhaps fallen short of God's desire for us, but always recalling God's infinite love and mercy for us all. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the Gloria. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now we'll have our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. Show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw that place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife, so the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said that this day on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your moral bodies to make you obey their passions. 
No longer present your members to sin, an instrument of wickedness, but present, present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as, as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have free, been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Our gospel hymn this morning is, Oh, for a heart to praise my God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Jesus said to the twelve, whoever welcomes me, welcomes you, welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whosoever even gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the presence of the loving God who knows our needs and cares for all the creation. Amen. Paul wrote sternly to the new Christians in Rome, telling them to behave. I'm speaking to you in human terms because of your human limitations. We all have our own natural limitations. But during this time of lockdown, we should not flinch from doing what we can do, what we ought to do. There are many theoretical plans and lifestyles which fail in the light of unforeseen circumstances. Then pragmatism wins by addressing the problems with vision and energy to develop practical solutions. And so it is that we learn by our mistakes. There is a, a Jewish story, one of many. A much respected rabbi listened carefully to the many complaints of his congregation of their problems, their failures, and their regrets. Each one felt overburdened, that their neighbors must have easier lives than theirs. One Sabbath, the rabbi announced that he had heard their concerns and that he had a plan to help everyone. The rabbi invited everyone to bring their particular burdens to the synagogue, to be gathered together before he shared them out fairly. But they came to worship shamefaced and empty-handed. However, they had shared a greater understanding of each other's needs and readiness to help each other. God inspired, as we see around us during this coronavirus crisis. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus welcomes everyone, especially the little ones regardless of their circumstances, meeting them with love where they are without requiring them to follow the many have-nots of the law, rules distilled from the original Ten Commandments, some 613 laws all to be obeyed by observant Jews, restrictive laws leaving little time to enjoy life. But a religious life should bring rejoicing, not criticism, and guilt. And we heard the story of Abraham and Isaac, Isaac his precious son and heir. Reminds us of our own young people, those who are our future. There is now rightly much concern about the closure of schools and the consequent impact on young people's education and their long-term prospect, prospects. I did badly at exams just four O-levels, but I had missed four terms at school, having survived TB, confined to a bed on a veranda without any educational or spiritual support. Returning to school aged 15, I was encouraged to, well, to do what you can. Thereafter, any opportunities were there to be relished, but regarded as an invalid, I was allowed to stay at school for the sixth form, for A-levels, and to meet Lois. But that is another story. Professor Tom Wright, the former Bishop of Durham, recently wrote to the Times, commenting upon our present circumstances, remarking that Christianity happens on the street, not just on the screen. Christianity is a team sport a team sport that surpasses all known ball games, 
even soccer and croquet, a team sport that is played across the world at all levels, where the spectators are part of the action without any threat of relegation. Our local golf and tennis clubs each have particular rule books. The Calcutta Golf Club has a beautiful tree-lined course and many monkeys. Monkeys who like nothing better than to play with golf balls. All efforts to deter the enterprising macaques from enjoying their particular sport have failed. So there is a local rule. Play the ball where the monkey drops it. Now, whether we play golf or not, there is no point in complaining about issues beyond our control. We have to get on with our lives, addressing the ball or the next challenge, wherever the local monkey has dropped it. We each have our own burdens and problems, which we do share voluntarily as members of the greater team. At this time, we're finding fresh ways to play the Christian game, sharing our lives, doing what we can to support, to love one another. As we live through this stressful time, we do try to abide by the commandments to love God and our neighbors as ourselves. The pragmatism of playing the eternal, the global game of peaceful fellowship, assured of God's love and the support of our fellow Christians, to do the best we can in dynamic circumstances, the happenstances that will never return to normal, for we must move on. Amen. Would you please stand for the creed? As we confess our belief in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our intercessions. Filled with hope by our risen Lord, let us pray that God would transform our lives We pray for the healing of divisions among all who follow Christ, that filled with hope by his resurrection, we may be inspired to break down barriers to forgiveness and reconciliation. We give thanks for and we pray for our Archbishop Justin Welby, 
our bishops Christopher and Richard, and for all who minister in this diocese, whether lay or ordained, and especially for the ministry here at St. Paul's. We give thanks that we are able to be open for prayer. Again, in the church, we pray that all who would come here would engage with and experience the presence of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who hold positions of responsibility and leadership, both internationally and in our own community, that they themselves may be led by God's Spirit to make wise decisions and help create a humane and caring world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who incite others to antisocial, addictive, or criminal behavior. That they may be transformed and redirected. We pray for the weak the marginalized, the lonely, the young, and the depressed. That they may be given the help and strength to resist the pressures around them and the support that they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the families represented by our congregation and all who are joining us virtually this morning. For their hopes and sorrows, the difficulties and celebrations, that all of our relationships may be bathed in the love of Christ, full of tenderness and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now in a time of silence, we share with God our own burdens, joys, and sorrows. And finally, we pray that God would turn or help us to turn faith into action, love into service, and our hope into planning. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of that peace as we are able. Now, as we begin our preparation for the Eucharist, 
we'll be joined by um, Tali, who will be uh, leading us in song. But just a little preface about that. Uh, last week, we were delighted to hear of the local Wimbledon uh, connection with a celebrated abolitionist, Wilberforce, and the seagoing slave trader turned campaign, campaigning clergyman and hymn writer, John Newton. So Tally will lead us now in another of his hymns, and it draws upon Newton's own experience of finding God in a death-defying storm at sea whilst echoing Abraham's words from the Genesis reading that we heard earlier. The Lord will provide. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and at all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and singing.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. Who on the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of, of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. As we look for the coming of the kingdom, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Now, as distribution of Holy Communion continues to be quite limited, um, we have our act of spiritual reception, uh, where uh, as the priest has received on the behalf of the people, we acknowledge and celebrate our unity in spiritual communion. So we pray together, come Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence as the hem of your garment touched in faith, heal the woman in the gospel, so may I be healed. Although I cannot receive you in the sacrament, I can, through this offering of my prayer, receive you in my heart. Grant this for Christ's sake. Amen. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more <clears throat> excuse me, than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now we have our notices, just a few things that I wanted to make sure to tell you. Uh, one is that we'll have coffee in the lounge, our virtual meetup afterwards, so you'll find details of that on our website and on your pew sheet if you receive that by email um, and or text. And we also want to point out that our church is now open almost every day of the week uh, for a couple of hours. This is dependent on people volunteering to uh, help keep the, the church open. And you'll see that I mean, part, there are only parts of the church which are um, available to be explored. And, and we also have, uh, you'll see when you come in, some uh, fragments of stone which have, have fallen in the church. So we are um, coordinating that off and we are uh, looking into how we're going to have that repaired as soon as possible. So um, no worries about that, but uh, if you'll hold those things in your prayer, um, that would be wonderful. Okay, and we do hope that you'll be able to come in and make use of this open space, this very beautiful, um, wonderful space that we have to engage with the presence of God. Okay. So we'll have our final hymn, which is, We Have a Dream.
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.